I want us just to review uh, a few of the things that we were doing yesterday. Okay? So, um, <coughs> first thing. We had introduced this matrix over here that we called the Minkowski metric. And we said eta mu nu with the indices up was the same as eta mu nu with the indices down. We introduced, we started to introduce four vectors. So there was the four vector for position. Uh, here was a four vector derivative. Here was a four vector for the potentials. Now notice something here. The vectors that I've given you, um, x mu and a mu, I defined them with the indices up. <coughs> We also had, in fact, p mu, so let me maybe put that one down to make the pattern completely clear. And again, I have defined this with the index up. And that's what we usually do. We usually define four vectors with the index up. There's one exception to that. And that's whenever you look at d mu. You always define that with the index down. Okay? So, so watch out for that. Now, if we wanted to get x mu with the index down, can anyone remind me, what was x mu with the index down? Eta? Mu nu, indices up or down? Down. X nu. Can you remind me what the notation means? If I have a repeated index, what is that telling me? I'm a sum over it. And when it's repeated, almost always, not, not almost always, always, one of the indices has to be up and one has to be down. Good. So this we would sum over naught, one, two, and three. Can somebody tell me what was the answer here? So there's the matrix. So you, so, so you couldn't even do it in your head. But what was the answer for x mu with the index down? CT. CT. Minus x? Yes? Very good. Now, uh, this rule here, let me stress. This rule with the index down, how we lower the index, that's very, very general. So, if we have v mu with an index down, that would be eta mu nu, v nu, for any vector v. Um, when you have objects with a single index, vectors, that's one kind of object. But you can have other kinds of objects too. Like this one, the field strength tensor that we started to look at. This has got two indices. And you might wonder, how do we treat things with two indices? The correct way to think about this is each index comes with a vector. And let me show you what I mean by that. So here I've written the equation for uh, v. Let me write another one. Let me say there's u with an index rho, and I would like to relate it to u with an index alpha up. What, what, what should I be multiplying by? Rho alpha, good. Up or down? Down. down? down. Good. Now, if this is equal to that and that is equal to that, is everyone happy that if I take v mu u rho, this times this will be equal to the product of that times that? So we will get eta mu nu v mu eta rho alpha mu alpha. Now, remember yesterday we said, when you write u transpose with a matrix and a v, so some quantity like that, the order of the objects inside that product matter. Because when I write this product down, the order of the factors in the product tells me how to multiply, tells me which indices should be contracted. When I write something like this down, does the order matter? No. Emil, why not? They, okay, they're just numbers, but importantly, I'm telling you here what sum to do. Right? So you're not getting the... I'm not telling you to multiply M into matrix V. I'm telling you 
sum that repeated index. So the sum is written in there explicitly. So it doesn't matter if we start to move things around. And indeed, each of those is a matrix element. It's just a number. Good. Um, so I can happily rewrite this as eta, mu nu, eta, rho alpha, v nu, u alpha. Now, this quantity you can think it's something that has two indices mu rho then we have got our eta mu nu eta rho alpha so I swapped the orders but we said no problem and then we've got again t mu alpha so can you see that every time I want to bring an index down I wanted to bring the mu down and make it a mu I multiply by an eta mu nu. <coughs> I want to bring the alpha down and make it a rho. I multiply by an eta rho alpha. So the rule that you learned for one index will work for a tensor with any number of indices. Can someone tell me? Let's take um, T mu nu psi equals. <coughs> now here let's go T alpha beta gamma. Can someone tell me what is the coefficient? Eta? Mu alpha. Just watch me because I might make a mistake. No? Why Saga? Why not? Mu has to be up and the repeated index one must be up, one must be down. Good. What else? Eta? Rho? Eta? New? New down? Beta. Good. Eta? Psi, gamma. Everyone happy? Good. How does x mu behave under a Lorentz transformation? We need to multiply by our Lorentz transformation matrix, right? So our Lorentz transformation matrix looked like um, so for the Lorentz transformation we had cosh beta cinch beta cinch cosh zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 if we multiply this into x mu we get the Lorentz transform of x. Everyone happy with that? Now, so this tells you how to change something with one index. If you have something with two indices, in exactly the way that you use eta for each index, if you have two indices, you'll use one of these Lorentz transformation matrices for each index that you have. So let's call this matrix lambda mu nu. The Lorentz transform of x is given by x prime mu, this is the Lorentz transformed x, would be equal to lambda mu nu x nu. That gets sum, so you're just doing matrix multiplication. Everyone happy with that? And that's how the index x, this is how the x transforms. Now, let's imagine that you had something with two indices something like f mu nu, and you want to know how does that transform. You will have one lambda, one, one, one of these uh, gammas for each index. Just the same way that we had one eta for each index. And this is the trick of the representation theory of the Lorentz group. When you've got 10 indices and you want to know how do you think about that tensor, just think about a product of 10 vectors. 
And whatever 10 vectors would do, that's what your tensor will do. Okay? And that's what the notation is um, summarizing. Okay. So I see Marcus has got you. I'm going to introduce one more thing, and then we will start with the presentations. I just want to remind you of the following. Um, so there we've got our four vector potential. <laughs> um, let's do the following. I want to know what is the magnetic field and the electric field in terms of the potentials. So what is B? Curl of? A. Good. What is E? Very good, very good. The minus grad of V was what we wrote for electrostatics. That expression is correct in the full electrodynamics. When we write these expressions down, remember, the divergence of B equal to zero is automatically true. So that was one of Maxwell's equations. This is automatically true just by virtue of writing the magnetic field in that way. We also had <coughs> Faraday's law. Can someone tell me what was Faraday's law? Good. And we saw that Faraday's law is automatically satisfied as soon as we have written the electric field and magnetic field in that way. In fact, this is how we figured out that we need that extra term. So there are two more Maxwell equations that we need. Can you guys tell me what are they? Divergence of E. Okay, someone else. Emil? Plus? Okay, I wanted in terms of epsilon not mu naught. Good. Okay. And absolutely, as Ishmael says, we could easily write epsilon naught mu naught as 1 over c squared. Absolutely. So these are the last two of Maxwell's equations that we still need to write. And what we want to do is we want to write these two equations in relativistic notation in terms of f mu nu. There's one equation there because that's a scalar. Three equations there because that's a vector. And yesterday we had started to look at what is d mu f mu nu. Okay? We will continue with calculating what that is, figure out what we should put on the right hand side. Once we have understood that, we will then be able to take a look at the question that Hamid uh, asked. So I notice he's not here. So Hamid must still be sleeping. <laughs> After the presentations, I'm sure he'll be extra refreshed. And then we will, we will come to Hamid's question about gauge theories. Okay? Good. But maybe this is a good place for us to stop and enjoy some presentations.